The psychotropic drugs had effectively been discovered empirically. No one knew why they worked, but they did work. So the next question was, why did they work? In laboratories all over the world, from Sweden to the United States, scientists are trying to answer this question. Solomon Snyder is one of them. In 1975, Snyder and his colleagues embark on a series of animal experiments at Johns Hopkins University to see how chlorpromazine works. He injects rats with the drug to see how it affects the brain. What he discovers is a change in brain chemistry. Chlorpromazine seems to affect one chemical in particular, called dopamine. The brain of a rat or a human is made up of these kinds of chemicals called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters allow brain cells to communicate with each other, making up an intricate network. Ultimately, what Snyder's experiments and others like his show is that there is an intimate connection between neurotransmitters and behavior. Dopamine is linked with schizophrenia. Other experiments link the neurotransmitter serotonin with depression, acetylcholine with memory. In fact, these neurotransmitters and the chemical reactions they produce in the brain are what cause behavior, normal and abnormal. The realization that the brain works on the basis of chemical signals which are dynamic and which are changing all the time represented a major revolution in biology, perhaps analogous to the revolution that Galileo ushered in centuries ago. No longer could we regard the brain as an unchanging, immutable switchboard with which we were blessed or cursed forever. The chemical hypothesis of brain function and brain messages meant that we could understand behavior and that we might be able to change behavior. The discovery that we are uh, people with brains and that brains are regulated by various biological processes has certainly shaken the older view that we really are spiritual beings and that brains be damned. They're just kind of the hardware, like our muscles and our heart, etc. that we need to be spiritual beings. The, the fact that we know that we have brains and that we can radically influence the way we think by ingestion of certain chemicals, certain pure chemicals that we know the identity of, has really changed our conception of ourselves and there's no going back. Much as some might wish it, there is no going back at all. The chemical revolution of the 1970s begets a whole new biology of behavior, a biology of thought, a biology of emotion. Some scientists begin to ask this. If the brain can be physically changed by pills like these, can it also be changed just by experience? One answer comes from this unassuming creature, a sea slug. Its anatomy is a world apart from ours, but its biochemistry is similar enough to run a crucial experiment. Beginning in the 1970s, work with slugs demonstrates that it is possible to physically change the brain's biochemistry just through learning. That the brain does in fact respond to experience and is actually changed by it. <laughs> 